Hello, my name is Andre, and I'm your teacher. And this is basic training for Adobe Flash CS3 Professional. And as you probably know, whether you've purchased the product or whether you're just um, using a trial to test it out, a Flash is one of the predominant tools in website design. Whether you're creating simple animations or graphics, interactive environments, or simply video, this is an excellent, easy to use tool. So, in this lesson, I'm just going to acquaint you with um, the environment of Flash CS3. And I would suggest as you go through these lessons to go through them in order. Um, you'll get more out of it, and it'll be a lot more understandable if you take it as the as the lessons are structured rather than jumping around. So this here is the welcome screen. And what's nice about a lot of these Adobe products is there's a lot of similarities. So if you've worked with um, Dreamweaver, if you've worked with um, Photoshop, Elements, any of these Adobe products, there's a lot of commonalities um, in the way the tools function. So if you're familiar with the way Adobe has it laid out in one, you're going to find it easier to use another. So this welcome screen, of course, you don't have to see it on startup. You can click here, don't show again. And I'll show you later how to turn that on and off. Um, but this is what it defaults to. And you see so you have three categories. Open a recent item. And these are commonly used categories. That's why they chose it for the, the welcome screen. Recent items um, or browse. You could hit open there. Create new. And then the type of um, document you want to create. Create from a template. Also advantageous. Um, down here you can jump quickly to getting started. And it'll walk you through online getting started with the program. Wait for this to come up. And you see we have some flash learning guides. Um, using flash for the first time. Building a banner. Some interesting things a lot of good resources online. And I'll show you another area of their online resource in a moment. And then we have, okay, what new features are with Flash CS3? And then we have resources. So at this point, let's open a new file or create new, just so you can see the work environment. Now this, this is the basic environment without seeing any of the tools, panels, uh, properties or windows. Now there's a key that you hit F4 and that'll bring up all your tools that you need. But at times what you want to do is you want to back out and and not be inhibited in your view of of um, of what you're working on. So you may hit make toggle a lot back and forth so you can delete all those tools and get a more bird's eye view of your project. So let's hit F4 just so you can see these tools. You basically have um, your command lines up here, which are, are common um, that you're going to see in many other programs, obviously. File, edit, you're familiar with, view, insert, modify, text, commands, control, debug. Those might not be as common. Window and help. So for instance, under file, we can go create new, or there's a shortcut for it, control N. We can open an existing project. We can browse with Adobe Bridge. If we have a site that we've created, perhaps with Dreamweaver, we can open from site. Open recent. A lot of the, the same things that we were able to do on the welcome screen, um, but even more options here. And you know that's the case with most programs. There are several different ways to accomplish the same end. So, OK, open recent. There's close. Close all if you had multiple projects open. Save. Save as, these are a lot of common ones. You can import video. Um, you can export an image or a movie. Publishing, there's that section there. Print, and then exit, those are some common ones. And we'll use more and more of these as the lessons progress. Edit, some very useful ones at the top here. Undo and redo, which you see in programs, and you're going to want to undo <laughs> You're going to make mistakes, obviously. So this is something you're going to use. Control Z is the shortcut. Cut and paste, uh, clear, 
find and replace, you've no doubt used that in many other types of programs. Um, and then some editing options here. Now here's the one um, that you may may not really get in depth with as far as some of these deeper preferences until you're you're advanced in using the product. But if we hit preferences under general, you'll see a lot of complex options under action script, auto format, clipboard, drawing. I suggest you leave all these um, at their defaults until you become very proficient at the product and then you may want to make changes. But up here in general, um, on launch, see here's where you don't have to see the welcome screen on launch. You can um, choose to see no document, a new document, or last documents opened. So that may be useful. Or if you turn the welcome screen off, remember that little checkbox? This is where you'd go to, let's say you want it back. You'd go back and put on launch welcome screen. Alright, and there's a few other basic options here that you can adjust um, that aren't going to cause issues um, if you're not an advanced user yet. But you may want to look at some of these later. So let me get out of this. Whoops, I made it disappear accidentally because this is so long. Alright, so I'm going to hit, I know you can't see it down here, I'm going to hit cancel. Alright, so we were under edit and preferences. Um, some customizing features, but Here's also a very useful one. You notice a lot of them, it'll tell you what the shortcut is. You know, control, and it's common across a lot of programs. You know, control C to copy, you know, control V to paste. But to get a full list of keyboard shortcuts, go edit keyboard shortcuts. And now you can choose, because you could, you can have, there's shortcuts for everything. And there's no way you're going to memorize them all. But perhaps as you use the program more, um, of course, you can look up these common ones, Control N, open a new document, Control O. So you can look up um, what the shortcuts are for some of these. In addition to looking up the existing shortcuts, you notice some don't have any. So you can, you can create shortcuts for some commonly used commands or tools. So the more you use the program, the more you may decide to um, modify some of the existing shortcuts. Um, or look up common tools that you're using and what the shortcuts are for those. So that's a useful one. And like I said, you can change, um, go to the tools panel. Okay, what's the shortcut to uh, the pen tool? Well, it's P. You know, very easy. So I'm going to hit cancel because I'm not going to modify anything. All right, now if we go over to view, um, some common ones, zoom in and zoom out. And there's many different ways to zoom uh, on this program or we can choose our magnification from here fit to window or some other options preview mode um, rulers and grid we may use those later um, snap to you're you're probably used to some of these tools if you've worked with um, Photoshop um, where it snaps it to the nearest line it, it can find rather than you trying to to, to maneuver exactly uh, to a certain point. The snap to tools are, are, are great. So we may get into those later. Alright, if we go up to insert, um, this is going to be one you're going to use often. I'm inserting a timeline layer or keyframe. And we'll get into what those really are because kind of like Photoshop, you have different layers, but in this sense they're video layers or, or frame layers. And we'll get into what that, that's what this is here, the timeline. So inserting timeline layers or keyframes is something you're going to be using a lot. Um, modify. Um, what you may use a lot of is the layer properties. Um, we can convert free keyframes, um, but you don't know what those are really yet, so I'm not going to get into it. Um, there's timeline effects. Here's something, though, that you're gonna, you've seen in other programs, no doubt, and that's... Um, transforming the object that you have created or inserted into your project. Um, free transform, you've worked with that before where you can basically move any edge to any distance. It's what it sounds like. It allows you to free transform the object. Rotate and skew, you've probably heard of that. Um, scale and rotate, rotate the 
object, flip it, um, a lot of different options there. Um, align, there's something that's obvious what it is, but you can align your objects um, any which way you want. Text, a lot of different options for text. Just basically what font do you want, what size do you want, what style, how do you want your text aligned, the spacing, check spelling, there will be some uh, useful tools you can use there later. Um, we're not going to deal with commands. Um, test movie, test scene, you'll deal with that as we go. Loop playback, you know, you may want it just to keep looping. Um, but testing the movie after you've um, gotten so far in the project is something that you're going to use. Um, we're not going to use debug movie, but it, it is what it sounds like. Um, that's so we can um, foresee possible issues with the code that's being created. All right, window. Here's something very crucial. Um, all of our our sections here, we have panels. These are called um, panels, and we're going to deal in, in future lessons with some of the options that we can choose within the panel and how we can customize them. And this is the toolbox, and this is the timeline. And then you may have a property window down here, but those are the basic sections of the environment. The toolbox here, the timeline here, our command lines up here, and then our tool panels here. But what, where you choose which panels you want to display here is under window. And I'll show you later how we can add certain panels and certain tabs within panels. And help, um, I'll also get into that, some of the online resources under help. But those are, that's just a quick overview of some of uh, the command lines up here and what they can be used for.